Yeah, Matt Lombo, just curious. Uh, all the stuff with J.J. McCarthy, obviously we hear you know Jim Harbaugh saying he's the best quarterback in this draft. He's never seen a pro day better than that. And I know mock drafts are kind of, you know, you take those with a grain of salt, but as we get closer to the draft now, a lot of team or a lot of people have, you know, teams trading up to number four to get JJ McCarthy there, where kind of all season leading up to this, it was almost assumed that he would be the fifth guy or, you know, into that like ten to fifteen range. Do you think uh his kind of meteoric rise over the last few weeks is legit, or do you think that's mostly just media propaganda? Remember this time last year, Ty, Will Levis was four to one to go first pick overall in the entire draft. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this this rhetoric that's going around now is typical of the season that we're in, especially once free agency ends. It's the who can prompt up things, and some of it comes from the agents. Some of it might be coming from the Arizona Cardinals because you know they want to sell their pick. They make no bones about it. And if there's a sense of urgency that you've got to move up to get J.J. McCarthy, then you know they're going to be the beneficiaries of that. And Harbaugh, I think, is being dead honest about it. You know, I think he's he sincerely believes that. I know in my conversations with him this summer, he was feeling that way. But it's different to say he's the best quarterback in the draft than it is to grade the quarterbacks in the draft. And I think the biggest mistake we make in grading these quarterbacks is we don't look back to other quarterbacks or the players currently in the in the in the NFL and say, how does this player stack up to that player, and what's the grade on them? We always just talk about where they're going to go. But people in the league are talking about how they're going to play. And that's the difference, right? So if you draft, for example, you drafted Kenny Pickett in the first round. There was a good chance when you drafted Pickett, and and Diggs knows this, that he was never going to be a top 10 player in his position. Maybe he was going to be good enough, but he was never going to be in that. And the grade that indicates that first round, he should be there. So a lot of this conversation is just based on where are they going to go, and it creates a sense of urgency to promote teams to to try to do something. And most teams are fairly smart and going to stay with their board. Now, I do think there are teams that want to improve their quarterbacking, certainly Denver, and we know Sean Payton has a history of moving up in any draft. Look at his career in New Orleans, and he could do that if he sees the right guy. Okay, so you said a lot of good stuff there, and Sean Payton – Definitely needs something, so maybe mm-hmm. he'll make a play for J.J. McCarthy. Could you imagine Sean Payton and J.J., by the way? Just two winners. Oh, yeah. Just yeah. two winners. That's what they do. Um, you said about – because we do it during draft season. This guy's better than this guy, this draft class. Mm-hmm. They all might be busts. Mm-hmm. They all might be Hall of Famers, yeah. but we're comparing them there. And teams are like, well, is he better than our backup right now? If he was, mm-hmm. if our backup was to be coming out right now, how would he stack up against this class? We don't even venture into that conversation at all. But J.J., it feels like, you know, and this happens every year, Ty alluded to it, it feels like he is the guy. And we just learned yesterday, Lombo, hockey player. Yeah. yeah. Did you know yeah. that? I didn't know he was a hockey yeah. player. I had no idea. Yeah, the, yeah, I mean, this kid is, you know, obviously and he's been a winner on, on every level that he's played. And Jim told me a story there. Remember when they were uh, – there was a debate whether Cave McNamara yep. and J.J. McCarthy were going to be the starter, and Jim was rotating them in the first four games. Well, Jim did that because he wanted to prove to everybody what he thought was the right thing to do, which was to start McCarthy. And eventually, through those four games, that's what happened. Because there were people within the Michigan program that thought Mac- McNair was, McNamara was the better player. Oh, yeah. And I think Jim proved it with the with the way he handled it. So he's been on board with this because of the background. Now, I think you got to be really careful. We, we tend to really fall in love with the player. We fall in love with the character, believing that we can make the player better because of his character. And sometimes that's true. But sometimes there's some innate flaws that go within that that you can't overcorrect. I'll be and I, I think you got to be really delicate. And this quarterback, look, there has been 60, 69 quarterbacks that drafted since 2000 in the first round. 69. If you count, if you take last year out of it, 66 basically. And 36 of the 66 have been bust. Mm. So if we're talking six in the first round, we know not all six are going to be really good players to the level that we need them to become. And you have to do a really good job of understanding what you're looking for and what would work best for what you do within the framework of your offense. And that's where guys like Sean Payton gain a huge advantage because he understands it. We never hear mock drafters talk about 
well, the guy's a progression read quarterback. No, he's really just a half read quarterback, right? So there's a difference between the two. A lot of teams do different things in that sense. And, you know, we all talk, well, every, not, not every team reads progressions out. They high low things on sides. So I, I think you got to be really careful. And the best way to evaluate quarterbacks is, is what you don't see. That's what you don't see is what she tells you the biggest story. That Mick Shanahan tree is, I don't want to say easier on a quarterback, but it is on what we're looking for and how we're looking for it, as opposed to Sean Payton's going to make you, right? I mean, you got to be, Yeah, that's a full on, mm-hmm. which is potentially why Russ gets dropped in that system, got to learn it. He's on, trying to learn <clears> the system <throat> as well on top of everything else. He's going to go to Pittsburgh and dominate. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's why I heard from Mark Bowley already, <laughs> but the quarterback, college quarterback. I saw him get on this show yesterday. I, he was, I had a tough time getting in that chair. I Watch your back, Lombo. Jeez, Lombo. Those are tough chairs. Those are tough are chairs. No beneath it. Caboli I, I had got a, it. He had his Achilles wrap, too. Yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, he wasn't, I saw I listened to him. I was impressed. I listened to him. He seems like he's wired within the program so that's a good thing hey, you know the bowling. thing i think when you watch these quarterbacks too i think you have to really pay close attention to you know i can still remember this as if yesterday and it's 1986 i'm walking carrying bill walsh's bags because back in 86 there were no b- backpacks so i had to carry his books around and i'm in the hoosier dome there walking behind him and he stops and he says who's that quarterback over there and he sees rich gannon from the university of delaware moving around and throwing the ball and he says, make sure Holmgren goes and works that kid out. Because Walsh fell in love with foot quickness. If you watch Steve Young play at the LA Express or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, of course. forget about the BYU experience. His footwork was great. It was one read and go the way he played, which was not the way teams wanted to. And Walsh saw his footwork and saw that he could do something with them. He saw something others didn't. And then Young had this great career when he came to the 49ers. So I think that's really what we have to be in perspective. Everybody just wants to grade the production of the court. Oh, he completed this pass. Oh, yeah, he did this. He did that. Oh, he missed this throw here. He missed that throw. And I think that lends you to make a mistake. I know on Josh Allen, I was overly critical of his accuracy issues. I didn't think they could overcome those, which deterred away from he's got this incredible size that, yeah, he's not always the most accurate, but that size wins more battles than loses. And then what we learned is good work ethic, humble guy, energetic guy, wanted to get better each offseason, went to work, you know, and he was able to fix it. But that's some of the things you're trying to learn about a guy Mm -hmm. going into the draft process is like, is this guy going to get better when he gets a job and gets money, or is he just going to be – the same. Josh Allen's like the guy that is almost the prototype yeah. of like every year, actual, yes. actual get better, which is a huge part of this whole draft process, trying to learn who the hell you're drafting, yeah. what you're getting in this pick. 